Welcome to Seizing Valor, where we discover God's path for manhood, one conversation at a time. I'm Zach. I'm Josh. And I'm Joe. And I look like I'm in the dark. You do. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Zach's in the dark. Someone's got to fill in. It's very much tour version of Zach. Oh, it's because I wasn't here last time. I'm in the dark. Oh, what's going on? Happy Boxing Day to everyone listening. Tell us what is Boxing Day. I've never... I'm pretty sure I've looked this up multiple times. It's Muhammad literally just Ali the day people return day. everything. Oh, yeah, I thought it was Muhammad, Muhammad return, back from the dead. Yeah, return all the gifts that you didn't like. It's like a British Commonwealth thing. That, yeah, so... But yeah, and not that Americans don't return everything because we totally do. But oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but happy Boxing Day, everyone, and a Merry Christmas to everyone listening. I hope we you had a wonderful holiday. You know, yeah, good tidings Christmas. and all that. But um, when when you're listening to this, Christmas will be in the past and New Year's will be in the future. So today we are going to talk uh, about goal setting, but particularly we're going to talk about setting our goals for the next year. New Year's resolutions. So this is going on record. So you're gonna be able to hold us all hold accountable. Hold us accountable. Yeah. I feel like we've talked about goal setting before on this podcast, right? I don't know. Mm-hmm. No. I think so. Yeah. You're so having something up. in mind. It's one thing to like, I don't know, being specific, having a target to aim at, you know, is important. You know, you don't just shoot an arrow into the abyss. You aim at something. So like this idea of having um, that target, having that goal, something to go back to when you start to struggle. Because if you don't have something solid when you start to struggle, then, you know, you just kind of fall off. So yeah. this idea of New Year's resolutions, you know, that everyone that everyone pretty much apparently gives up on by February. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, But yeah, so I guess uh, we just wanted to keep it simple today and we just talk about our own goals Maybe if we, even if we don't have like a, a, like we name a specific aspiration we put on the wall, but just to get things we want to, we want to, we want to try to get done this, this next year, I suppose. So who wants to go first? Not me, because I still feel like I'm formulating my thoughts in my brain. I could go. I could go. Hit it, Josh. Definitely. So yeah, so uh, I talked about it before, maybe in a couple podcasts ago, but my wife and I, so every year we choose a word to reflect on. So it becomes like the word like our word of the year and so that's like the word that we want to like incorporate within us to like work on to include in our physical reality our mental reality emotional ones and especially spiritual reality like something to really reflect on and to pray through and and all that stuff and being a man i've always shown like very like practical things so like the first year that we did it was i did health and then the second year i think was rest and then the third year was active and then this year it was refined so like every year it was like i want to do something to like work on bettering myself obviously because that's the idea of resolution but like that but then having that be like the year for you know focus of the year and so yeah and so this past year was refined and i I talked about that a little bit like how it was a very difficult year in the sense of kind of a lot of things that happened and being unemployed and all this stuff and kind of working through all that, going to school and just having a lot of stuff going on. Um, and I feel like the Lord used that word refine as a way of like, obviously strengthening my, my character and strengthening my person as I'm kind of going through difficulties, through the struggle, through discomfort and through things that made me better as a result. And I actually... So yeah, so then I choose a word and then there's usually more detailed things. So like I had like eight or nine resolutions. I wanted to read a lot more. I wanted to exercise and lose weight and all that stuff. I wanted to record music. I wanted to graduate with like honors, which I did. And so like everything on my list, I I did basically like 75% of everything. So go to confession twice a month, which we did. Um, I read 15 books or 13 books this year, 13 books, which is the most I've, I've, I've read in a long time. Um, and yeah, I wanted to record 50 songs. I've recorded like 64 songs this year, which was good. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go continuously. <laughs> and so yeah, it was a, it was a good year. The only stuff that wasn't good was like my health. So like, I want to work on that and focus on that this year. So yeah, so that was last year. We're fine. We did pretty good on the resolutions. Cause yeah, so what, what we do is we, we make a paper that we decorate with my word, my resolutions, her word, her resolutions, and then like stuff that we do as couples. So like confession, date nights, you know, stuff like that. Um, 
Yeah. So seeing it all year, like kept it into focus and I was able to reflect on it and all that when it's because we put it up on our fridge. Okay. So this year, the Lord put it on my heart and I knew this maybe even a month or two ago. I wanted the word to be freedom this year. Freedom, baby. <laughs> freedom! And so, yeah, exactly. I'm going to put that picture of uh, Braveheart. Braveheart. Yeah. Um, because so every year it's been like a practical thing that I've learned a lot that I've really focused a, a, you know a lot on it and made strides towards like through through health and through activity mm -hmm. through refinement and so this year I wanted something a little more like not what's the word more not tangible it's like the opposite of tangible uh broad um, broad okay um, like an idea. Yeah, kind of, uh, I, I'm. I'd like. I can think of what you're trying yeah, to say. The word. And the word is like on the tip yeah. of my tongue. It's like love, or like what are those uh, less <laughs> tangible, tangible, more abstract. Abstract. That's there it. You that's, that's there it. we go. There we go. Abstract. Yeah. Boom. So I wanted something more abstract to kind of really lean on and reflect on, because the goal of this year is to look at all of the th the things that I've been trying to do for the past, you know, several years as resolutions and have failed doing them. And to get to the root as to why I've been failing them and then trying to detach from those purposes and then like trying to really hit at it and, and like figure out why. So they're going deeper into all of these things. So what I did is I made a list of all the resolutions I wanted to do. Like I wanted to read a few more books this year. I wanted to, you know, the same stuff. So record more, more songs. I wanted to do two albums. I want to you know, get a, get a job. I want to do like, you know, practical things. But then sticking with like exercising and losing weight and eating better, like I want to hit at the at the core reasons as to why I struggle with those things. Sure. Like why is it difficult for me to eat well? Why is it hard for me to be super active? Why is it hard for me to do all that stuff? And to like look and reflect. And I've already have a plan. I'm gonna get a spirit. I have like spiritual spiritual direction coming, and I'm gonna like try to figure out why these things are are difficult so that I can conquer them and be free and like detached from these things. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Well said. <laughs> that was like a lesson in and of itself, people. Yeah, right? So like take what Josh said. Like this idea is like don't set goals based on like it, it's like in swimming how we used to t talk about like res result goals versus process goals. Like yeah. you can't control results. You can't control the process, like what you put into it. So this like mm -hmm. idea of like, instead of like the symptoms, like you're going for the cause. Like, so when people are trying to better themselves, like they spend too much time on the outside and don't think about the inside. And, um, cause the inside yeah. is harder. It's harder to figure out and it's also harder to deal with, but like, yeah, it's a lot more lasting change. So like this mm -hmm. idea is like, you're really going to the core. To yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because what I found over the years is like, I would have long periods of time where I was able to do these things, but it wasn't lasting. So like, I've mm -hmm. had long stretches where I've been very good with exercise, but then I fell off the horse. So I, I lost 25 pounds with Noom, then I put it back on again. And so like, why, like, what are the reasons why, like, I'm struggling with those things? So I want to like, get at the core and like, look at the baggage, look at the wounds, like, just hit it and figure out what's going on so that I can better, you know, tackle these issues. And then live a healthy lifestyle mm. while being detached from things, you know, cause I feel like gluttony is something that I'm attached to. Like I want to eat and I want to eat poorly, you know, it's like, I'd like, like to do that. And so I want to try to figure out how I can not like it, not enjoy that. Or like try to be more active as opposed to being more lazy. And so looking at why is it that I like, what can I do? Like, why do I desire rest over activity? And like, like what, like why hit at the why, and then try to make those adjustments and the changes, whether they're practical, whether they're tangible, abstract, whatever it is to then to, to move in a direction where I have a little more, more balance. And, and I'm a little more detached from these things that are kind of keeping me in chains, you know, mm -hmm. so freedom, freedom. That's the thing. Freedom. And I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. I think it's going to be a great year. I'm like, I'm like ready. I'm like geared up for it. I have it all written down in my journals. And uh, yeah, it's good. First of all, I'm just generally applauding you for having that already like 12 days before the end of the year. <laughs> like yeah. most people would be like, all right, it's tomorrow. I should figure this out. <laughs> right. I'm big on this. I love end of the year stuff. Like I love reflecting on the year and like, I, I know I'm, always, I'm huge on like, I just want to improve constantly. Mm -hmm. And 
so yeah that's it's like exciting to me I, that's where i get like my motivation and inspiration from is like the desire of like change and a new beginning yeah so, yeah that's me <laughs> I mean, I guess maybe I can pick up off of that because I feel like what I'm looking to do is very s similar. Um, so one unique thing for me is that, first of all, my birthday lies literally very close to this time of year. So I'm like, I'm change, I'm like changing the year overall, but also change like turning over new year for myself as like being mm -hmm. alive. And I'm about to turn 30. And literally this entire year has been like, all right, I'm just ready to turn 30 at this point. Cause I think it's contributed to my stress <laughs> and like, just be like, you know what, just let's get over I'm, the I'm sick of ending a decade. I'm ready to begin a decade. Like I'm ready for a beginning rather than an end. Um, so I am kind of actually, I was dreading it probably when I first turned 29, but now that I'm like about to turn 30, I'm just like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm like ready for the start of something new. And I do feel more ready for it. Like I feel more mature than I was. And I feel like, willing to accept it and be like yeah 30 yeah i'm a man i mean i was a man before but now i'm like next step man <laughs> um but yeah like josh i had a difficult year you know a lot of stresses a lot of anxieties a lot due to attachments that some i realized i had some i knew i had but denied i had and then some i didn't know i had so um a lot of things like that um and I guess if I wanted to pick a word instead, it, once again, it's along the same lines, but I think I, I would say present. Like I want to be present. Like I want to, not just that, but I want to be in the present. I'm so bad at not living in the present. I'm a worrier. Like I'm such a worrier and, or I'm a projector. Like I'll project things or I'll like be spend too much time reminiscing or like thinking about the past or why things aren't like they used to be or, um, and that's weighed me down a lot. So I'm really, or like being deterred by like, what could go wrong or suppose like I, I do a lot about like what could go wrong like or like if i'm feeling like a health thing or something it's like how could this get worse or like i can't go and do this thing that i want to do because i'm feeling not so good because like i don't want to make it worse so I like um i want to just try to be more present and less deterred by those types of things i want to be able i want to march forward rather than like stay put or like um or like or or go backwards like i want i want to march forward and i want to be present so I don't want to be deterred so easily in things that I do, whether it's at work, where it's social or career or um, I don't know, physical or like, I just don't want to be deterred so much um, by fear or by worrying or by um, not living in the moment. Like I want to, I want to, not recklessly, I don't want to live in the moment recklessly, but like, you know, I want to, I want to step forward um, and being able to let go of control a little bit, I guess. This is all very abstract thinking, but like, I just kind of was coming with this at the moment, but like let it being able to let go of control. I was actually just listening to a um, uh, a sermon by um, um, Bishop Barron, Bishop Robert Barron, and he was talking about how uh, one of Ignatius's philosophies of uh, I don't remember what the Latin term was for it, but this idea is like if you have a propensity to struggle with one thing, you should try to bend very much in the opposite direction in the in the idea to be like straight, like in the end. Um, so this idea of being able to let go of control a little bit and not being attached to control or attached to comfort or attached to um, safety or um, not in a way that I'm like going to go put myself in danger, but like I'm not going to like uh, let that deter me from doing things that are worthwhile for me to do or the good things that I want to do. Um, so that's kind of like a very abstract thinking of, of how I want to go about. So I want this to be an active if if god wills it i would like this to be an active type of year i want to i got deterred for probably like a good six months of like really going out and doing things because of like anxiety anxiety struggles and um i want to be able to go out and step out and i don't want to necessarily i want to be in the mindset that i'm like i'm going to do these things regardless of what happens of like i'm regardless of whether i feel perfect doing them or they go the way i expect or any of that stuff. I want to like step forward and do them anyway. Um, I was having a conversation at one of the retreats to someone about like this idea. It's like, what are your priorities? Those things that you're like, I am going to do this no matter what versus like the things you'll be like, I will do this until this happens and then I will kind of fall away. Um, so obviously the important things in life, like your vocation should be on the one that's the side of like, I'm going to do this no matter what, like I'm committed to this. 
like no matter what happens, I'm this is priority number one, or this is a priority more than my safety or my health or my whatever, like this is priority. Like I wanna have more of those priorities of like, this is more important than my own comfort, my own safety. Like I'm going to walk forward in this. Um, yeah, so that's that, that's like the general overarching theme. And once again, trying, getting involved in stuff, being active um, and being working on my relationships with people a lot. Cause I, I feel like I've been doing that very well towards the end of this, the second half of this year, but I wanna keep going with that. I wanna really be present in re my relationships with people. I mean, like you gentlemen, of course, like I've been, I've been I think this podcast has been a great way um, for me to like, you know, be present with you guys and um, grow closer to you guys. But even like the other friendships or like the relationships with my family members of just like trying to really embrace, embrace that and really, um, really be in the moment um, type of deal. Um, and then there's a lot of like minor things that I would love to do, like a kind of like a little to-do list and a checklist. Um, I mean, like even at work, I know there's like certain areas that I was talking about this with my boss today, of like, you know, like, I, I, for example, like, I feel like I'm doing really well with youth ministry or young adult ministry and campus ministry, but I'm like, I really need to work more on youth ministry because it's an area I haven't been in in a really long time. And it's like a lot, it, the avenues for getting into, like to reaching out to them is different because of like the nature of what it is. And so I'm really wanna focus on that next year of really getting into that um, or, you know, keeping up with exercise routines. I found a lot of good, like I found a swim team this year uh, or the, towards the end of this year. And I wanna keep um, going with that, um, you know, exercising and things like that. Um, for those who don't know, listening, I am a writer. I like to write for fun. Will you ever probably read anything I've ever written? Probably, most likely not. <laughs> but I like to do it for my for myself, and so I want to be able to dive more into that and to be able to get more out of that. Um, yeah. So, and uh, yeah, oh, of course, continue with prayer life. I feel like it's not good for me not to say that, but I've been I've been starting to. One of the things I've started doing is um, I started doing. I wouldn't say a full holy hour because I'm not that good with timing, but like a, a, a holy 45 minutes uh, I've been doing in the morning before, uh, before work. And um, I'm going to try to, it's been, it's been really good because I've been able to detach from productivity. That's one of the things I've been attached to is like this idea of productivity is like what defines me. So like detaching myself from productivity and just praying, it's been very good for me. Um, so I want to keep going with that. Um, yeah, that was a lot of, words a lot of word mush but i hope you listening got a concrete idea out of that somewhere <laughs> that's, that's great it's great love it it's fantastic zach that's good stuff to work on thank you and we're here to support you we can help each other we should all like hold each other accountable yeah we need thing, accountability buddies yeah and even just this idea of openness like yeah this is, I think this has been fantastic. This is something I didn't really have for a long time. I wasn't as open as I should have been, but I think this podcast mm -hmm. has really helped me open up. So I wanna exactly. keep going with that. So like, yeah, but yeah. So having having support groups, people, have people support you in your new year's resolutions. Don't just go them alone. So Joe, what are your thoughts about the upcoming year? Well, before I continue on mine, I gotta say that these are all great goals and I'm excited to hold you guys accountable. Um, wow, that didn't sound poignant. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, it's, 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 I, 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 no, 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 no. I've just been kidding, like, reflecting on my own. I'm um, kidding you. My word for last year, well, this year, was uh, at this point last year, I was figuring out what my word is. And I've probably teeter tottered right now in the last month of what I want my word to be. Um, right now, I can dead set say, so you can all hear me say this. It's, it's, it's confidence. It last year, it was, uh, it was intentionality, uh, intentional. Um, and I would venture to say that I did accomplish that, not in the way that I expected. Um, if I can say so myself, there was a lot of things that I wish I was more intentional about. I could say that I productively, distracted myself with other productive things um but not the things that really had a lot of fire in my belly you like you know like those butterflies in your stomach like, like yes mm -hmm. um i had a lot of fear 
regarding some of those things. I'll get to that in a second. But ever since uh, two, three weeks ago, when I went to um, went to a men's retreat, I told you about our freedom retreat, um, which really sparked like this is this is what it is because your word is freedom, Josh. Um, that helped me in the confidence factor, um, the confidence department of for one these certain things, but also other areas of my life that will pay dividends. I can feel it. Um, so the things that I didn't really pay much mind in, I, I did a little bit more in August through October. Um, I, for the last three years, uh, had been writing children's drafts, stories, picture book stories. Um, and awesome. it, everything is set basically and ready to go. When I let my mother take a look at like the editing process, because she looked at all of my essays in college, I'm like gearing up for it. Like, okay, what do you think about this? And she she gives me like only three or four things like to critique. It's ready. <laughs> and then that's and that's basically where we're at right now. Like, two out of three are just dead set, ready to go. The um, the letter to the literary agent is all set and ready to go to be just sent whatever you got to do. I had just been set on not doing it just because what are people going to think? What are people like? I was not an English major. I was a history major. Um, among other things, I, I was double majored. Um, so I just didn't do that. And then the other thing that I was not intentional about doing, um, it, it's a it two parter, um, finishing up a guitar course that's self paced. I'm halfway through it. Um, and then I think I was focused more on like praise and worship music, which paid dividends. I'm, I'm, I'm great at that. That, that helped in other facets of my mind, to, mental to music. That's great. I had always wanted to do that, but also write more music, which I had gotten like tipped. I tiptoed I, almost like I had pulled my punches with both of these, um, endeavors, pulled my punches. That's the best way I can put it. Um, so I'm going to keep a just a minuscule goal just to not overwhelm myself so that it will pay dividends for this year. Four song EP. That's what I want. Dang, man. And, Dude. And, there, and there are things in there. I already have it. Like I have memos on my phone, like of just a smorgasbord of ideas. And even on GarageBand, I just song the first song is already pretty much there even the lyrics like this can go a lot faster than like i think it could <laughs> that's what nice, i'm saying Joe. that's great so those three things dude i had no idea that you were into writing children's books that is so cool like i feel like i made just this humongous amazing discovery today <laughs> And it makes, it's what, I kept, that it makes I kept me so it, happy. I kept, I kept it so under the radar. Josh, I might have actually talked to you about this even in the last yeah, resolution with yeah. intentionality, that yeah. word. So being yeah. intentional about that. I Granted, I was so productive in a host of other things. Like I was a leader uh, for a swim team right now. I was even in a leadership role for a summer school position. But just so many things in my life. I got to like clean house. You know, I got to like go for the things that are – productive distractions even bad distractions too you know they're 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 there i'm sure but like the productive distractions like oh like i could be of use right here i know i have skills in those areas and they'll pay dividends like for the things that really bring fire into my belly but like that's what i got i gotta be a little bit selfish which can breed confidence you know because god gave me those gifts you know so yeah. and stuff man Great. man that's if good. you need any uh, mixing or editing or mastering i got you that you, you no don't worry i'm you're you're on there and if you, and if you need someone to read a draft i would i would be more than happy to do so please, just as please a, please as a, as a personal friend because i i don't know i don't know why this makes me so excited but i don't know i just uh, yeah <laughs> um yeah. so yeah everyone there you have it we have Three words. I guess that's not what we set out to do, but now in the end, we each have a word for this year. We have, uh, so we have freedom, we have present, and we have confidence. confidence. So, so what is your word for this year, everyone, as you listen? So think about it. Give it some thought. You still have 
what, five days from when you listen to this? Well, from when this first comes out. I don't know when you're going to listen to it. But um, so think about it. What do you want your word to be? Where you, what are you going to come back to when you start? Like, other than obviously God himself. But like, what are you going to, what word are you going to come back to when you feel like you're struggling for the year? So I urge you, I implore you, I challenge you, put it on an index card, maybe multiple index cards in every area of your home or even your workplace. Presence, freedom, confidence, put it in front of the mirror. If you want to like specify on the lines, this this index card strangely doesn't have any lines, make some lines. Be be present, (laughs) Going going on the computer screen right now. Cover cool. every okay, inch. Maybe a separate of... place because I can't see my notifications, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, love it, man. Put it everywhere. Yeah, just cover. Just have an entire wall of sticky notes that say your word. Present. <laughs> Joe, I just noticed on your mug. Is that that the swim team picture? Oh on yeah, your mug? it is from yeah. training trip. Yep, that's awesome. Do you want to show the audience? <laughs> Absolutely. So this is one of my favorite pictures ever. It's actually me right on everyone, just laying on top of everyone. A bunch because... of naked men. Uh, we are, and we are and women these, too. We are Gosh. wearing swimsuits. Gosh, we keep this co-ed. <laughs> we keep this co-ed as far as, you know, half nakedness. From my view, it just looks completely like it's just a bunch of naked people. <laughs> Hopefully the resolution is high in this video. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> what happened to you in the last two weeks? Tell us. Zach was, where was that? In Maryland. It was? What was I yep. doing? I didn't go to Maryland. No, oh, no, I was almost in Maryland. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I, I was down near the Maryland border. That's what it was. Okay. So we were supposed to record on a day that I was going down to a young adult event, another mm. one. <laughs> I'm trying to get around. I've said that on this podcast uh, multiple times. I'm trying to get around to all the corners of our diocese to try to make sure I, uh, you know, be there in person. People, you know, put a face to a name. I know a lot of the uh, very involves, involved or the leaders like will come to events that are like diocesan central. But, you know, there's a lot of people who just come to the small things that I don't get to see. So I'm trying to get out and around. Um, so, yeah, we were down. I was down in New Freedom, Pennsylvania, which is literally like five to ten minutes right from the border. Mm-hmm. Um, very nice, small, quaint town. Uh, we did adoration in a very, in a, it was called the historical church and they were not lying. This thing looked very, something very old, but in a good way though. It was like the old where like the church is like, like the floor is carpeted old, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is, is always weird. That was like a classic thing back in the days, have the, the carpeting yeah. um, with the wooden mm-hmm. pews, which is a choice. Um, but yeah, definitely classic architecture with like the altar and everything. The altar was all made of wood as well, which was, was interesting. Like lots of Gothic type of work, which was really awesome. And it actually, what happened was we were supposed to have adoration when we got there, but the deacon didn't show up to expose the sacrament. Uh And so we were there probably for like 20 something minutes. And then they decided it's like, you know what, we're just going to have a little reflection and then we're going to say the rosary and Mm -hmm. then we're going to, and then we're going to like go eat like that we were planned but then uh so then part way through like the meditating on the reflection then the deacon kind of came in so what apparently had happened was at the at the real so there's the historical church and there's the new church so at the new church they were having an event so they had moved some things around so he was he couldn't find the monstrance or anything so like that's (laughs) so he had Uh spent half an hour figuring that out before coming back and so anyway it all turned out fine everyone like did a great job adapting and adjusting um so that was that was good and then we went to a nice little place called seven sports bar and grill which sounds like it's referring to seven sports as in like there are seven ways to do athleticism but it's actually just seven is the name and then it's a it is a sports bar (laughs) and grill so but it was very good they had a lot of crab dishes because i guess because once you're so close to maryland crab becomes a thing so it was very good um, yeah, so that was, that was pretty, that's what, that's where I was. That's why I was MIA. Um, but outside of that, um, had a nice Christmas party. I was up in Scranton. Okay. <laughs> we had a very awesome Christmas party with some of, some of the friends. It was an ugly sweater Christmas party. Um, love I those. participated. I love those. Well, me and my, me and my one very good friend, my best friend, um, he, we, when we lived together, we used to do Christmas cards and uh, our very original Christmas card, we did like a fashion shoot in like those ugly vest cr- sweaters that the grandmas wear, you know, with the buttons, like, and we use those as like, s- like vest, like suit vests 
and then we like would wore, we wore suits and then we did like a little like a mock fashion show it was supposed to be like satirical and we sent that out to people but so we still have them surprising and we actually coincidentally we didn't plan it but we both wore them to this party which was which was hilarious so yeah so we played uh so there was that and um I'm trying to think if anything else happened. I mean, yeah, Zach, I've I've always looked forward to your guys' Christmas cards. I know. I'm. I, we're we're like in a conundrum. If, if if a Christmas card does come this year, because we do not live together anymore, but if it does come, it's going to be late. <laughs> it's yeah, going right. to be after Christmas. So anybody who's listening who is on that list, apologies in advance. Um. So <laughs> yes, it's a lot harder to collaborate when you don't. You know, someone's not there all the time in, in your you're house. Like, <laughs> in your house, and you go down to breakfast, and you're like, you know what? I have an idea. Let's do it right now. Um. Yeah. So and then also uh, traveled back home, got to uh, see my nieces, which was really awesome. They were in town with my parents just to just to be there. When I when I got to church that they saw me and their faces lit up, which always makes my heart very warm. And they both were like, they both ended up climbing on top of me. And so I had like one on each like leg of my lap. I looked like Santa Claus as I'm like going to church, which was <laughs> which was comical. But um yeah, got some nice spiritual direction this week, which was also very good. That's another, that's the reason I was in town um, at home. Um yeah, so I mean overall it's been it's been really good. It's been it's been a good week. There was probably way more that happened, but I'm feeling on the spot. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, so yeah, but you now leading up to Christmas, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm excited. What about you, gentlemen? What's what's been going down? I haven't. I haven't. I'll have to listen to the episode to figure out what happened two weeks ago. But what's been happening this week? Jeff. Anybody? Joe. 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 Josh. Joe seems to have frozen <laughs> himself Joe. intentionally. So why don't you just go? Okay. So I had a I had a nice week. Um, so my wife Claire Claire dog was off. She we did a staycation for the week, which was mm-hmm. fantastic. So so nice to have her home. We did all kinds of things. We did a a pizza party. We did a um, a lot of like chill chill days. We had people over. We did some music. We did what else? We, all, we finished all of our Christmas shopping. We did a lot of cleaning in the house. Um, yeah, it was just it was just really nice to have everybody all together. So it was great. I did some lights out front, which is cool. Woo! And uh, so the house looks fantastic. I rearranged the studio, so now it's all like really big and open, which is great. We cleaned up the basement, and we like took all the baby stuff out and we put it up in our attic because before we were afraid of our attic because a bat had gone out of our attic, but now it is batless. So I'm happy you put stuff in the attic. It is no longer then, the bat cave. It is no longer the bat cave. <laughs> there might no, not be a man in, masquerading as Evangelanti up there. <laughs> and it was it was just me. No. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, it was just like a really perfect week to just be with each other, be with each other as a family, and work through some stuff. We like rearranged a lot of stuff. We cleaned up the house. We did. We changed up the kids' rooms. Um, so we separated the twins now. So the, so Grace has her own room. It's oh. Eli's old room. And then John and Eli are together, which has been great. They've been sleeping a lot better because what's been happening is John has been keeping Grace awake. And so oh, they wow. like never, they never nap and they struggle sleeping. So they've been so crabby. But, but the day after we did that, John took like a five hour nap during the day. <laughs> <laughs> In reality, like, oh, he's keeping himself up. <laughs> he's just, he's just exhausted. <laughs> was why he's been so crabby but um yeah so it was a really nice week you know just good family stuff yeah so that's awesome man it's good and by the way i hate to sound everybody listening like 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 i'm like i'm a commercial here that i'm like keep plugging josh and claire's album but dude let me tell you i've been been driving a lot and i've been listening to that album and it just oh it just it just makes me feel so in the christmas spirit i love it oh nice it's great yeah, I'm so so glad you like it, Zach. Really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah so we um, it's I was surprised at how much um support that we received from that mm-hmm. album. So for so everyone listening who has listened to it or checked it out, like thank you, thank you for for listening. We're over four thousand streams on Spotify, which is what? eight dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really? 
Yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> but that's awesome. Like it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's bad, yeah. Um, but a lot of people bought the CDs. We brought it to church, and we sold a lot at church. And um, so we, we broke even and, and got had a little bit of profit, too, which was good. And then, um, yeah, so, so thank you, everybody, for doing that. Zach, do you have, like, a favorite song? You know, like, one of them that's, like, you really like more so than the others? I really... I really love the beginning, like so. Mm-hmm. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Ditto. And um, was that the first one or is that the second one? O come, let us adore him is the first one. Yes, two. that's what I'm o saying. Come, I'm like, I really love the second. O come, I'm pretty sure it was O come, O come. Yeah. So I don't know. It's just something about it. there's so much grandeur with it. And I just love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Though I do really like um, the first Noel as well with, with Celia mm-hmm. in it, mm-hmm. like the harmonization mm-hmm. between. Celia and Claire, I think, is is very, very good. They do blend well. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. They, sing well they sound very similar, but they, there is a distinction between them that I think is works very well. I was also very surprised with the one um, with the children's choir. Yeah. I did mm. look at the title before I listened to it, and I'm like, where did Josh get all these kids to sing from? Yeah, <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah I went and recorded the choir. We have a choir at, at our parish, and... Uh... One day I was just like, can I just record you guys singing the song? And the instructor, the director was like, yeah. So I just brought all my equipment and recorded it in half an hour. We should have done a few more takes, but we didn't have time. But it ended up being they don't much blow. better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I thought it was going to be was really fantastic. bad, but it was great. It was really nice. I think you guys had a good mix of like having guests singers in there which was which was good i think that you did that it helped like mix it up a little bit and have some yeah, exactly. fresh voices in there so yeah. i think it just overall i mean yeah the beginning of the album especially i just oh, man, i really love it yeah it's solid yeah so thank, thank you zach appreciate that you're welcome uh, all right joseph joe uh i didn't have the greatest week mostly oh. because I'm not, let me preface this. I'm not too much of a guy who's affected like seasonal affective disorder. However, it's, this is a pretty extreme case. I didn't see the sun for like an entire week. Mm. Uh, I felt like a freaking vampire. Uh, So basically Sunday of the previous week, uh, that was the last time I saw it. Then it was cloudy and dark. I I go into work at like 645 and the sun doesn't really rise until like 710 for this this past week and then i go and coach and then the sun sets at like 4 20 mm. and then six o'clock i'm out of there it's just it's dark like the entire time i mean i can see the sun outside but it's just not the same you got to feel it on your skin um yeah. so that's yeah, tough yeah that's winter tough. time's tough yeah it is yeah. um it does remind me of swim season how it all always used to be you yeah. know um so that's I something remember. i have to get used to um but otherwise like i think what's been getting me through is of course prayer um because when you don't really have the physical light out there you can get the actual actual light and then you can become the light light from within um i know it's easier said than done um sometimes even somebody listening to this who's not a christian might feel it's cliche but it's it's the truth um it's 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 quite a beautiful thought uh that gets you through especially the winter these dark times uh especially in the holiday season when a lot of people don't really feel like they have a lot of good things going on. Um, but the light of, at the end of the tunnel is this podcast for one thing, but also good time with uh, family coming up too. Uh, and coaching. I forgot to let you guys know. I keep you updated, Zach. Uh, I think two two episodes ago, I let you know that like there were some mm-hmm. kids that never had any experience at all. Uh, in the water and got them across the pool uh, within a few days. Uh, still got a ways to go, but uh, I think there's a lot of good hope that can come uh, from this one season that I'm really just heading on my own, which is a daunting, daunting task, and it keeps me up a little bit. But uh, it's it's something that, regardless of the outcome, I should be proud of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I always enjoyed the most, like, coaching the least experienced kids mm-hmm. just because – it's very much in that vein of, you know, how like Jesus says, like, you know, the first shall be last and the last shall be first, or like those who humble themselves will be exalted. Those who exalt themselves will be yeah. humbled. They always look for the lower seat at the banquet. Like this idea is that these kids are going to be so much more humble. Like they're, they're not going to think they know what they're doing. So they'll mm-hmm. trust you 
And just like the idea is you improve so more drastically, like at the mm -hmm. beginning than you do when you get really good. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like it's just always all improvements. It's always upward movement. Maybe it's not as fast always as you want, but it's always upward movement. And yes. um, like those kids like are the ones I enjoyed the most. What I actually did not like is when then later down the line, a few years later, when those kids thought they were too cool for school and all of a sudden they had a personality change because they thought they were so great. Um, yeah, we're currently dealing with that too. A lot of kids, um, especially in the younger upper, uh, the younger classmen who are, uh, feeling they can skip class and stuff like that. Maybe because they're in a sport, maybe not. But I told them, hey, you skip more than two classes. Can't participate. Be on the bleacher, sure. Like, we're learning butterfly today. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. Yeah. But it's good stuff. I mean, like the reward at the end. Obviously, I know more than anyone how tough coaching is. But like at the end of the at the end of the year, it's just it's so worth it when you see them like make those big jumps. And yeah. It gives them so much confidence too, so which is which is fantastic. It is truly mm -hmm. a blessing. So thanks, man. No problem. Cool. By the way, before we guys move on, I just remembered something else. Kind of, this is very timely, I suppose. But have you have you guys watched the Chosen, like the new season of the Chosen yet? Not the new season. No, I have not. Well, the first two episodes, right, and then the third one yeah. is dropping in next like, week on Christmas. Yeah. So um, yeah, I actually I watched them in theaters. We went and, and watched them. Oh, I remember you had said that you were doing that. I forgot you said that, but yeah. I just saw the the second one yesterday because it just came out yesterday. Oh man, it was it so was good. so good. It's just like they keep making them better and better and better, and I'm just I'm blown away. Yeah, we time. really need to stress that because like oftentimes whenever there's Christian media, it's always like ah, oh, it's not very good, or that's too heavy handed. The story's not good. The characters are not but good. But this. Um, but this, this is the one thing that I have seen that is just absolutely Blown phenomenal. Away. Yeah. And yes. so, like, I want, I think everyone, if you have not seen The Chosen yet, what are you doing? <laughs> Go and watch it. It's even on the Bible yeah. app, too. Go check it's it out. Yeah, it's, it's on, everywhere. like, you could, yeah, you can watch it for free, people. Download The Chosen app. It is free. Mm -hmm. It free. is fantastic. It just feels, I don't know, it just feels so real. Like there's an element, as you said, Josh, like to other things, it just, it loses the reality of it. Like when it becomes too heavy handed, things like that. But this mm -hmm. just feels real and mm -hmm. relatable. And it is the story of the apostles, but it's also the story of us, like as Jesus's followers. And it just mm -hmm. makes this, that connection. Jonathan Ramey does such a good job playing Jesus. Like, I'm like, man, that I know that's not the real Jesus because it's Jonathan Ramey, but like. <laughs> but it feels like it is. Yeah, he feels like he a does real such an amazing job. Because I've never seen like a Jesus that was it's like joking with people. Yeah. Apparently, or, like, yeah, has like has a personality. No, it's always like a stoic, apparently. like a stoic type, you know, where it's like yeah. a, like an itinerant teacher who's just like very. Yeah. And to have someone who's like actually, like you could see Jesus being like that, like being yeah. silly and like being charming and like. Because he he must have been, you know, yeah. he must have been to draw mm -hmm. that much that much attention and and to bring people in. Like I'm sure mm -hmm. he was mm -hmm. he was that way. Yeah. So I just I love him, man. Yeah, and just showing him his relationship with each apostle and the apostles' relationships yeah. with each other, and that, oh, I think that scene so with little James at the end. Yes, I was yes. I was literally crying. Mm -hmm. Like we all, everyone was just crying. Like it was so beautiful. Joe, you haven't seen it yet, but it's amazing. I, no. I also literally loved the ending scene of the second episode. And so the ending scene of, for you overall, when they're in the circle, like yeah. praying together, like before they're sent out, mm -hmm. that's just so powerful. Mm -hmm. And even like seeing Judas in the midst of this, of being like, man, this was a guy, he was like all in, he was like their friend. He was like, he was committed to this at the beginning, mm -hmm. just and it yep. makes it so much more tragic. I saw that. I saw the clip when they when uh, they shook hands, or they uh, when when they're meeting each other. Like this is season three we're talking about. Like so. Yes. So Judas kind of came about at the end of season two, and mm -hmm. now they're like kind of fleshing them out a little bit more. And now, obviously, those who are watching, this is not like they add a lot of stuff for the sake of telling a story. They're not like all of it's not one hundred percent biblical truth. But the point is, is to get you interested in the story so that you go to the source the material, like to the gospel, like yeah. for real. And um, but it does such a yeah. good. I think it does such a good job of touching the hearts of people. So watch the chosen. Watch it, because you are a chosen. 
So what we would all like you to do right now who are listening, we would like you to subscribe to Seizing Valor. Hit that notification bell so you can stay updated on our content. Please like every single video, even the ones past and future. We would love to have you also comment on any video and also a post on Instagram. When we do post, we would like you guys to engage in that format because it's actually can boost us uh, when we do especially share reels. Also, we are on Spotify. Please follow us on that medium. If you do have any comments or questions or concerns, qualms, queries, doubts, misapprehensions, misunderstandings, if you do have any of those and you want to keep them more private, you can put our email, seasonvalor at gmail.com on your speed dial or whatever the email version of speed dial is. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want to keep those conversations private, we totally understand that. Uh, that is all. Close us out, Josh. Sure thing. Well, I said, I'm spooning. Well, Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the blessings that you've given us. I just pray that you you be with us. And um, as we approach the end of this year, uh, I pray that we are given opportunities to reflect on all that we have endured, all the things that we've done, and especially in all the ways that you have worked in our lives this year. I pray moving forward that as we prepare for the next year, that we are moved to make some good changes, some changes for you, some changes for us, for our communities, for our families, and uh, ultimately just to become the better, the best version of ourselves, to um, deal with our earthly attachments, to be free of whatever it is that we're struggling with, and really to, to, to break through and to allow you to, to break through all of those uh, walls, those barriers, barriers, the chains that are that are holding us back from becoming the best people that we can be. Strengthen us, and again, remove distractions from our lives. We have nothing but noise constantly, Lord. And so I just mm -hmm. pray that we're, you know, given uh, the motivation and the inspiration to to look into our lives and to to see all of that noise and to maybe clear it out a little bit. Maybe get rid of some things that are pulling us away from you. That way, we can set some time each day to focus upon you. Encourage us, strengthen us, embolden us, and let us be the person you long for us to be. Thank you, Lord. Most precious and holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all for attending, and we will see you all next week, and a Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. And Happy Boxing Day. <laughs> Old Lang Syne. <laughs>